G'day and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip into Nunawal country. On this solo hiking trip, I was able to access 1100 acres of natural bushland with river frontage. I feel very privileged. There are five old dams here as well, and the few parts that were cleared years ago have been reclaimed by nature, and there's a lot to explore. There are also a lot of old access tracks, but to get to the place where I planned to camp, I needed to hike through the scrub for a good part of the way. This is where I decided to spend the night. I generally try to keep my pack up off the ground if I can, until I can spread out a ground sheet and start to sort myself out. This is the kit I brought, lots of stuff, but it was not an overly long hike in and it was going to be cold so I wanted to bring everything I needed. I keep my tarps in dry sacks along with a couple of ridgelines so they're all ready to go. One end of the ridgeline has a loop and I basically just wrap it around the tree and feed a biter cordage through the loop and stick in a toggle. Super simple and easy to pull down later. The ridge line is all hanged up, so I can just walk it out to the other tree, where I cinch it down with a trucker's hitch to secure it to make sure it's nice and taut. I then pull the tarp out of the stuff sack and throw it over the ridge line. I originally set it out low so I could film, but I usually have it as high up as I can reach so I can walk under the tarp once it's set up. Once I have the tarp in the right spot, I lock it in place on the ridge line with a couple of friction knots. And then it's just simply a case of staking it down. The back corners I usually stake down low, but I keep the front up on sticks so I can see the view when I'm lying in my hammock. And this is the view. Not bad at all. Once the tarp is up, I can set up the hammock. Like the tarp, it's packed away in a way that's ready to go. The tree straps sit on top and they're easy to set up. Just wrap it around the tree and feed one end through the loop on the other end and you're in business. I have climbing carabiners already attached to the hammock, so it's just a case of pulling it out and clipping it onto the tree strap. The red carabiner is for the head, grey for the feet, so I know which way to set it out. The hammock has these funky adjustment lines which act like a Chinese finger trap. It makes it super simple to make sure the hang is just how I like it. The 
I also have a sleeve around it to keep it clean in case it hits the deck by mistake. I really don't like getting my gear dirty if I can avoid it. The sleeve stays on the line, ready for when I have to pack up. I then just put in the poles to hang up the mozzie net and hang the under quilt. Chucked in the sleeping bag, the top quilt and the pillow, then set out the ground sheet and it's good to go. I planned to come back to this camp again, so I decided to set up a proper fire pit and got a fire going as the temperature was dropping fast. Dinner was a simple vegetable curry. I cut up some tomatoes for the pot and added some mixed beans as the base. Added some salt and pepper and put it over a low heat to start cooking while I cut up the other veggies. I also had a coffee brewing with one of those coffee bags. Not a perfect coffee, but any coffee is better than no coffee, right? The veggies I added were mushrooms, garlic, shallots, sweet potato, capsicum and beans, which are fried up in some oil and spices before I added them to the tomato and beans. Jamie Oliver would be impressed I reckon. I also brought some pre-made flatbread dough which I also cooked up, all very easy and all very tasty. After I cleaned up, I read for a while and kept warm by the fire. As you can see, it was going to be a cold night, but I slept pretty well, more than normal in fact. Work an hour or so before dawn to a rather frozen camp. I set up a fire quickly and knocked up some muesli and watched the sun come up.
Once it was light, I could gather more wood for the fire and try to thaw the camp out. As you can see, it was still very frozen. That bird you hear above the other birds is a lyrebird. I saw him a few weeks back over the other side of the hill. He does a kookaburra call too from time to time, but it's not very good, unlikely to impress his lady friends. But he does make me happy. I love lyrebirds. Packing up was pretty quick, but stuffing that frozen tarp into the dry stack was tough on the hands. When I unpacked it at home to dry it out, I left a pile of snow on the back lawn. Once I packed it up and put the fire out, it was time to head back to the car. It was about 10am by the time I'd faffed about, but it was still pretty cold as you can see. You know, I love getting out and about in the Aussie bush. Eucalypts are some of the best trees going I reckon, and I passed these ones on the hike out. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this species of scribbly gum is Eucalyptus rossii. They're all over the place in these dry sorts of forest. The scribbles are caused by the larvae of the not very imaginatively named scribbly gum moth. Okay, well that's it for this frosty solo camp in the Nunawal country. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon.